Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and this is part number four in my Nick collection training course. And today we're gonna to be looking at the HDR FX Pro 2 plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Hi, dynamic mate. That was my high dynamic range dance that I just did there. So, um, if you have any comments or anything on this video, I just want to get it out there. Put it in the comments below here. Give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe because I have loads more videos coming. Anyway, let's keep this one quick today. So we're going to jump straight into Lightroom and Photoshop and show you how to use HDR Pro 2 Effects whatever it's called. Oh, you can also follow me on Snapchat in three, two, one. There it is. And so let's jump straight in. So for an HDR, you need at least two or more images of the same thing. Ideally three, five, or seven. One correct, one above, and one below in terms of exposure. I have a video all about HDRs if you want to go and watch that. Um, so here we are in Lightroom. I actually have seven photographs here. So all you have to do to start off is you select all of the images, ideally taken on a tripod, so they all line up nice and easily. So you can see I've actually got correctly exposed and then lots of other different ones that go through. Now, importantly, you right click and you do not go to edit in. You'll see that it is not actually any of these here. And that's because Lightroom can't open more than one image. Um, it doesn't do layers. So instead what you have to do is you go to export and then you'll see inside export there is a Google thing and it says HDR FX Pro 2. Click on that and then we'll open it up inside Photoshop. Now if you are inside Photoshop you'll open all of those images you will then go to um, you'll just click on the HDR FX Pro 2 and it will open all the images that you already have open on your computer. So it's gonna load up all of your images and then it needs to analyze them all and do some things and you need to help it to do this. So it will bring up this panel first of all, where it will show you all of the images at the top here, you're correctly exposed and then it knows that I've gone about three stops above and two and three quarter stops below is what it reckons. Right, so then you can hit create HDR, but what you wanna do here is you can select it to reduce ghosts so that means that if there's anything moving in the image, what it can do is make sure that it doesn't blend and have something weird going on there. So I would recommend selecting that. It's a good idea to do that. And then they've got chromatic aberration as well, which is that if there's any elements of like red or green edges to your images, you can ask it to get rid of that for you, which is really powerful. Alignment, it automatically selects that because you want it to align your images for you. Okay, that's it. Then you hit create HDR. And this is going to take a moment because it has to remove your chromatic aberrations. Then it needs to align all the exposures. Then it analyzes each of the images, creates the highlights and the darks and the midtones for each of those images. Then it starts blending them and seeing if it can figure out what a really great HDR is. Great, so this is what it will load up with, which is essentially now your HDR. So let's quickly have a walk through all of these different elements so that we know what's going on. Here we have a preset library. So essentially you can go through and there's a bunch of presets that the Nick software has actually built for you. And literally you can click on that and it will create your HDR from that. Now for me personally, I would only use realistic and there's only even a few in here like balanced is quite good, uh, bright is really good. The other ones kind of give that real grungy, horrible, well not horrible, but I don't like that type of HDR. But if you do, then that's awesome. There's ones like this, which is the surreal ones. So you can go to town and use those. I personally wouldn't. Now you can also create your own presets down here. So once you've made an effect on something, you hit the plus button, name it, and then it will save it. So this is one of my presets that I've made just here. Um, let's come back in here and I'm just gonna select balanced. Over here is where you have your zoom, okay? Oh, sorry, over here you have your different comparisons. So just like the other ones, you've got a left and right comparison, which is your basic HDR, and then any edits that you have made. You then have them next to each other, okay? Top and below, the original, and whatever edits you've made. 
simple. Over here, you get to change your different colors of your background. Again, I suggest medium gray is gonna work out best. Then in the side, this is the most important thing. This is where you have all of your options. So I'm gonna open all of these options up because this is what essentially you have to be able to make your edits within your image. So there's even little tiny drop downs inside each area. So let's start off, tone compression. This basically tells you, slide it to the left, it goes more like your original image. If you go to the right, it's gonna, essentially it's gonna, it's going to give you more of a dynamic range, but it gives the image this kind of more compressed feeling. Method strength, now there's lots of different ideas behind what this is. I don't know the exact thing, but I know that to the right hand side, you basically, it's gonna add more detail or structure from some of the other things, which is, um, it looks at the texture of the image and highlights the texture, and then to the left basically smooths out the texture and makes it a little bit more fairy, fairy? Fairy-like, like soft, there you go. So I'm gonna go somewhere around here for this image, looks quite nice. And then you've got the HDR method, okay? And this is gonna tell you how it figures out what the method strength is. So essentially you've got depth, okay? So this is really looking at your highlights and your shadows, a little bit like contrast, but it's not using one image, it's using all of the images. So again, I like subtle, which looks really nice. Detail, okay? By clicking through these, these are essentially really bringing out how many details is it gonna look at? So. If you go all the way to grungy, that's like brings out every tiny detail and highlights it. If you go to soft, it reduces all of those um, different textures. So I'm gonna go for realistic. Then drama, basically this is, this is kind of like contrast, okay? So you tell it how much contrast to have. Uh, for this image, I'm gonna sit around, I'm actually gonna go for deep. This looks really nice. So great. The next thing we have tonality. This is just like tonality and pretty much anything else. You've got your exposure. But remember, it's working out the exposure across all your images. It's not a single layer that it's looking at. So we can boost exposure, you've got your shadows. Okay, so we can boost the shadows in this image a little bit. Your highlights, you can pull back your highlights. And you can see when I select highlights, because it's an HDR watch, it's only really affecting the sun, which is amazing. So I'm actually, I want the sun to be a bit more blown out so that it looks realistic. I like it there. And then you've got your contrast. So you can boost and reduce your contrast, but again, it's using all these different layers to figure it out. The more images you have, the more complex it can be. I'm gonna bring the black point back. Then structure, okay? So you can see this makes huge changes. This really is looking at the texture of the image. So if you boost it that little bit, that's where HDRs really come to life but you can go way too far, so be careful. Again, a bit like the clarity tool in Lightroom. Color, you've got your saturation, okay, so you're more or less saturated, and then you've got your temperature and your tint, so just like in Camera Raw or Lightroom, so you can make it look a little warmer, you can add a tint to it, so on and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna leave this somewhere in the middle, because what I really want to get to, and the reason why I've been rushing this I'm not rushing it, but getting to it, is here again. The Nick software, the power is the control points. So you can add them, and to explain it again, watch my other videos in this, in this, uh, uh, in all of my Nix collection tutorials, but if you add a control point, you click where you want it. Now, wherever this dot is here, this is its reference point. So I'm selecting it on the blues, so it looks for the blues. And if I click on the box down here, it's gonna show me, look, it's only selected the blues in this area. If I want it to select blues in a larger area, I can make it the entire image. So if I select somewhere like this, it's essentially selected all of the blues across the whole image. 76% of the image is covered right now. Whereas if I was to shrink this down, you see the percentage is gonna go down to 40%. So let's, for example, let's do all the blues. Why not, as we had that selected? Great. So we're gonna unselect this, and now within this control point, we have some options. I can pull back my exposure, great, of just the blues. My contrast, I'm gonna boost up. My saturation, I'm definitely gonna boost up because it's that blue sky. My structure, I'm gonna probably boost it as well. 
And then I just have a drop down where I have other things that I can do. My black point, my whites, my temperature, and my tint. So temperature, I'm gonna go back towards my blues. My tint, I'm gonna come back as well towards my greens, but only a hair. The reason is this. I'm now going to take another control point and I'm gonna select the sun. So again, let's have a look at this by clicking the little box and I can see what it's going to select as my sun, okay? So it's now I've got anything which is the black color. Let me just come in and, and, and find this. So my sun, you can see what it's got selected here. And now I want to start making some alterations, but to my sun. So with this watch, what I really want to do here is I want to add some warmth to it. So all of this area, look at the sun has now come to life. But what I want to do is make it bigger because I want all my highlights to have that kind of feel. My tint, I'm actually going to go towards my purples, my magentas. Look at that. So that's really started to come to life. But I have lots of other things that I might want to affect, like the side of the rock here. I want to reflect some of this sun. So what I can do is I can take this option and I can move it over here. And now it's going to add the same effects to whatever is on this rock here but I only want to do a smaller area. So it really is just a reflection of the sun on there. And I'm not gonna make the effects quite as much. Oh, make sure we select there. And we are good to go. Now, the other thing I'm just gonna do, it wouldn't necessarily be how I'm doing it, but I wanna show you if I was to add multiple control points. Uh, so I want to do these bottom corners here. So again, let's make sure we have this selected like so, so we can see here what is actually, oh, let's, so what I really want to select here is my greens, and then I'm going to option, and I'm going to click over here to these greens on this side, and then I'm going to do the browns down here too, I'm going to make this one a little bit larger. And these three, actually, I'm going to shift click across all three. Okay, so now I'm editing all of these at the same time. So you can see it's actually changing everything at the same time. Boost my saturation, but I'm going to actually, oh, sorry. Like so, I'm actually going to bring back my exposure because I want to make those areas a little bit darker. I'm going to really pull that tint up, actually, and make it really that purple color. I went too far. There you go. That's starting to look really great. Now, let's keep moving down, because now the final things we have is we can add a vignette to this. Okay. Um, again, I would add the vignette in Photoshop or Lightroom, but you can actually add a bit of a vignette to it, just as you would do in those ones. But then the other thing is you've got the graduated neutral density. So this is essentially an ND filter. It's faking it though. And essentially what you want to do is this. You've got your upper tonality to the top so you can boost it up or bring it down. You can do the same thing to the lower tonality, but you kind of want it to be where the horizon is. So this is what I recommend. Take the lower to minus 100 and it's what it's done in stops and the, grad and the upper really high. And then take your blend mode to zero so it creates an exact line across the screen. And then move the vertical shift to your horizon. So now I've got it on my horizon. Then I can boost my blend mode back up so that I know that it's blending across my horizon. And then I can actually set my two levels. So I actually want to boost my lower tonality and I actually want to bring back my upper tonality. So now it's created this amazing effect and I love it. Now what I do want to do though, I've got too much going on in my sky, so I don't want it to be too dramatic. That's gonna be a little bit better. And I'm starting to really like it. Now what I do want to do is take this one, option, and I'm gonna duplicate it. So it's gonna actually make that far, far more. And I'm actually gonna select the grays instead. So it's gonna change the way that this works a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that purple. Now it's starting to come to life. Anyway, I'm not going to go any further. You can see what I'm trying to do with this. And I'm going to select the before and after. You can see the real difference 
that what this software has allowed me to do to this image is pretty dramatic. The final thing that I have at the very bottom is my levels and curves. So I can add curves to this, okay, which is pretty powerful actually. And I just have some presets in here, which I can add in. Again, I wouldn't necessarily use any of these presets because they're not the greatest. They're just not in my opinion. But what you do have in here is luminosity. And that allows you to move the brightness of your image directly without getting things too blown out. So this is what I'm gonna to do to this image. I'm gonna boost those highlights up a little and I'm actually gonna lift the shadows up too. A hair. This now for me looks amazing and I really love it. So click up here, we have a compare button before and after. Before and after. I took this image a long way and I don't have to, you know, this isn't necessarily how I would edit, but it really does show you the possibilities of this. Now, what you have to do here at this point to get it back into Lightroom, you hit save and it's gonna come out of this and it's gonna save it, okay? And then you hit command save and then it will automatically put it inside Lightroom, which is really quite powerful. So now you can see here, it didn't appear in Photoshop, but where it did appear is back inside my Lightroom. Now, let's have a look if we wanted to do an HDR from one image, which you can't actually do, but this Nick software allows you to do something similar. So you go to HDR FX Pro 2 again, okay? And what it's gonna do is gonna bring it up in here. And what it's going to do now, okay, is it just, it does a tone mapping across the image, which means that you're looking at one image, but it's gonna boost the highlights and the shadows independently. So what I've actually done now is taken one image and I can actually use all the same presets but across one image. So it's not really an HDR at all. It's just an HDR effect, the way that it's compressing the image in a certain way to give a certain feel. That is the tone mapping element and all that is, it comes under here, you've got merge multiple images and tone mapping single image. So that there is how to create an HDR image inside the HDR Pro FX2 from the Nix collection. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, massively powerful. If this tutorial helped you, please give me a thumbs up and definitely leave me a comment below with any questions or concerns and I will definitely do my best to answer you. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.